Guys, we're loading in Game Free. Just a second. And calm your tits in the chat. <laughs> anyway, let's be serious. Let's hop into the draft here. Official intro, Inc. Welcome, guys, here on Hefla TV One. My name is Hefla Casting with Mr. Underscore Plek Ada. This is Tong Fu versus Energy Pacemaker in the ESCC 2015 tournament. It's a Chinese tournament uh, about pretty much tier two teams. Uh, the price pool is about forty thousand dollars if you translate it from yen into uh, dollars. That is. And yeah, Tong Fu being the favorite team in this tournament so far. They had an upsetting game number one, came back pretty much by. I'm not even sure if it's outdrafting, outplaying, but just en energy pacemaker strategy, the whole thing, it just didn't work out. They, they wanted to push, never got to it, and then at some point, before even tier 2 towers were falling, they were just giving it up. The juggernaut was spiraling out of control. He had so much leeway, so much free time to actually get fed. That happened and Energy Pacemaker said, okay guys, it's a best of three, make it 1-1 one, one, and in third game we're gonna come back and maybe draft something more convenient for us. So that's where we stand right now. I welcome you all on the stream, hope you enjoy the cast, so let's go into the draft. Indeed, and we'll start out with an undying ban by Tong Fu, no surprises there, and Energy Pacemaker will remove the clockwork. And that doesn't surprise me considering how the last game went. The clockwork did have impact in the game, it wasn't all about the juggernaut. But nonetheless, Tong Fu will now ban out the Shadow Fiend, trying to avoid the Requiems, maybe that late game stand from Old Chicken once more. And the final ban out in the first phase will be that Tusk by Energy Pacemaker, which we haven't seen at all today, at least while I've been here. Yep, Leshark being there, so Earthshaker, Storm Spirit, Queen of Pain. That's definitely something that's coming through. Uh, they again focused on the offliner and the Roma, so no undying, no task, no uh, clockwork. Even though the clockwork did not have the impact in the last game that we, we saw in, in previous Chinese games, uh, he had some nice hook shots actually. I think three kills were pretty much his counter, uh, where he really had a clear hook shot. Uh, besides that, not much action, but he also didn't need to because Tong Fu knew they, they have much better farm. We saw it also supported by the crafts. They were absolutely spiraling out of control. If they decided at like, what, 15, 20k net worth advantage to just force a fight, um, they would have seen that how far they are ahead, but I mean, they checked it out already. So, what are we actually getting here from Tong Fu? There is the Rubik actually coming. Okay, so we had earlier today some nice Fisher Steels, some nice like Echo Slam Steels, also uh, the Storm Spirit when the Rubik gets a ball of lightning, that's always convenient for initiations. But other than that, oh, well, it's it's a standard pick right now. It's it's something you can just toss there and, tongue, and then Energy Pacemaker has to work with, uh, I don't know, around the Rubik somehow. I honestly like the Rubik pickup more so than, say, a Shadow Demon as a setup in this case, because you've got the telekinesis, and more importantly, you can steal, as you mentioned, the Fisher, the Echoes, hell, even Ball Lightning. These spells are so powerful for Rubik, especially the Fisher, considering it's instant cast, 0 0.1 second cast point, which is absolutely insane. He's better than Earthshaker with the spell himself. But now yep. second banning phase. Beastmaster gone, Visage gone. What else do you expect, Hefler? Well, Beastmaster Visage actually kind of tips me off. They banned the spider right here. Tung Fu doesn't want to risk like some sort of pushing. Um, we had earlier Chinese teams also pick an alike in, in like as some sort of surprise core. Um, since they already have flash track, I I'm not really sure. I, I think they're going to ignore the Queen of Pain here in both ban and pick. That is my guess. But maybe we also get it through and uh, they just run her double. Uh, so far, she has been 99% of all the games. I'm just looking forward to which kind of physical physical course we get. We have no gyrocopter being picked up. Uh, Tong Fu has the next pick, so if they want to prevent Tong Fu from getting the gyrocopter, they have to ban it right now. But maybe EP wants to get the gyrocopter, for example, which is not bad, actually. The Storm Spirit's up and in, Vortex on someone holding him in place, double... Uh, double the impact from the call down guaranteed earth shaker is pretty much the same story so on the one hand you want the gyrocopter on the other hand you have to ban it now otherwise tong fu might grab it well if tong fu get the gyrocopter how can ng pacemaker counter it that's the big question do they really want to give it away what can they take to stop this being a problem well that's that's the question <laughs> <laughs> That's the big question. And you, you see, they, they think about it just like we do. They ban a DK and have the next pick. So, Jarocopter, yes, no, maybe. 
Uh, if we get a gyrocopter for EP, then for and for Tongfu, we could be looking at anything from a Beastmaster, maybe in the offlane, to yeah. hmm, no, no Beastmaster in this one, of course, it's banned. We get a Lena and a Tech Tech. Yes, Techies. Um, by the way, I forgot to tell you, you haven't been here. I don't know if you have watched those games. It was very late in the night or early in the night. Depends <laughs> on the perspective. Um, Teshis was banned day one and day two almost every single game. Like it was either uh, the fourth or the fifth ban. Uh, one team banned Broodmother, the other team banned Techies just because they don't want to deal with it. This time we actually get the techies through. The only the only doubt I have is uh, we always had like these techies task combinations or techies tinies combination. Now we have a, just the blunt techies, and well, we have to see how EP actually works their way around it. Uh, the good thing about techies is it slows the game down significantly. Uh, pushing is much harder. Um, the roaming early might actually happen. You don't feel save on the map you might smoke up and then suddenly end up losing half your people on the way to your target so that's actually happening when we have a teshis <sighs> okay. i don't know let's see my question here is i get a few nightmare flashbacks about that bloody hero um you think we could be seeing maybe the tiny so hand grenade techies is the kind of techies tongfu play Normal techies where you are never on the map and are just a terror in the minds of the enemy. Or is it a similar to London Conspiracies techie, a in-your-face techie that will win the game in 20 minutes? Nope, I don't think so. Um, we actually get a Nyx Assassin as a response. What is that? Like, mm. Nyx Assassin, I did not see that one coming. And I mean, Nyx Assassin is, is a very, very effective counter uh, to Leshrac. Because the mana burn scales amazingly well on the Lash Rack, that's just a fact. It's also nice against the Tiny because it's a mana starving hero as such. Uh, so far he doesn't have any, uh, say it, any any support as in mana support. Um, with the last ban they might actually take also the IO out. Um, even though I don't, um, I'm not so sure if they, if they even want to go for it. So I can understand the next assassin against the Lash Rack. I had a nice discussion actually with the uh, London Conspiracy about this because... Yeah, about the scaling of, of mana burn and everything. Either way, I was talking already about it. It's either Task plus Teshis or Tiny plus Teshis. Um, energy pacemaker that didn't have the chance to ban the Tiny out. So there we have it. It's a toss into Mines potentially or a Techies toss into uh, Suicide. That's definitely coming out. And on targets like Earthshaker, even Storm Spirit and Lina are very, very effective. Mm. The only thing I'd worry about is him, the Nyx Assassin. The Nyx Assassin surprisingly can mess with the techies with the carapace to an extent. But then it comes the question, what lane is the Nyx in? What lane is the ES in? Is it an ES off lane or a Nyx off lane, assuming Storm is mid? Hell, Lena could even mid and Storm could be safe lane. This this is a very flexible lineup from NG Pacemaker. And going into this last pick, the Lycan was banned out by Tongfu. So what is their last pick going to be? It'll be a Huskar. Oh, this is going to be aggressive. Yep, Haska aggressive. Um, the good thing about Haska, well, is the magic damage does not do too much. Then again, uh, with the tiny punches, oh, might be there. The upside again is tiny early game has problems against Haska. Mostly, uh, the Haska is actually yeah easily killing a tiny just uh, by damage over time if he just jumps on him so we have to see where this one is going as in for disable ep has like a nice spectrum of disable we have a fisher plus the other two stuns we have a vortex plus the overlay slow we have uh light striker a we have of course uh the nyx assassin stun the the impale and maybe even the spike carapace a tiny bit if they turn around like an avalanche or something like that plus we have the Huska where he really jumps on a target that really follows the target you can force stuff you can blink it doesn't matter once it's cast you the Huska is actually following i think they added uh something like two patches ago that the Huska is not following you anymore even till the fountain if you tp out and he casts his ultimate it has a range now but uh, some patches ago, if you jumped on the target and the T beat out, you actually followed them into the fountain, which is naturally a bad thing. If memory serves, and my memory has been wrong more than once today, if you break a thousand range, it breaks. Yeah, something like that. Uh, However, we now, Windrunner. Yeah. We get the best response to a Husker, which, I mean, it sounds it sounds funny, because uh, uh, 
Windrunner as such is a relatively squishy target, but uh, with the evasion, with the shackle, and even more, the focus fire on the Husker, which is physical damage, obviously, it's actually a nice counter. So all you need is disable on the Husker, get him low HP, which you can still do with magic damage, but once the magic scaling comes off, and then the Husker is almost magic immune, then you need physical sources to actually get him down. So there's the tiny punch, there is uh, the focus fire now, uh, that makes, makes it actually... Uh, nice damage. Also mines, for example, landmines. And diabolic edict. Yeah, they are diabolic edict and uh, say it like uh, suicide quad and landmines. They're also physical. So actually, they have quite some good means to uh, kill the Husker if I think about it. But it has to be well timed. And the problem is by then, if your Husker is low, he might as well already kill half your team. Either way, let's introduce them really fast on EP side again. Old Chicken is gonna play the Husker, so uh, that's our mid hero. We have Fan on the Storm Spirit, so a safe lane Storm Spirit. Even though I saw them already swapping lanes, so that might be an option. We have an aggressive try lane, something like that. Lee is playing the Earthshaker. Lina uh, played by LT. And last but not least, we have Mr. Xaolel on the next assassin. He's actually running into a tiny, but uh, this is not gonna end into something. He's just sc scouting out where the techies is putting stuff already. Mm, and, well, I don't think we're gonna be seeing any immediate techies mines near the outpost, but we'll certainly be seeing some put near a sentry that's already been deployed, so they know it's safe. And, well, we'll quickly introduce the Tongfu side. We've got LPC playing the techies, and we've got uh, Zex Bingo gonna be teaming up with him, playing the tiny. There's your hand grenade combo. How many times they pull the pin on that is yet to be seen. We've got Zinku playing the Windrunner. Over in the mid lane, we've got Kabu currently. And over going up towards the top lane now, we've got UUU9. So yep. lane-wise, this is going to be an odd one, I think. Maybe Lesh top, Windrunner mid with a Rubik, oh. and then Dual Bot. They, they, they do what, what, I, what I earlier said. I, I know that they sometimes swap the lanes. So Fan oh. actually, the, uh, usually... The, the safe lane farmer is going into the mid on the storm spirit while the probably better Husker player is gonna go in somewhat of a tri lane. I mean this tri lane is not converged yet but uh, the Earthshaker is supposed to be with the Husker and sooner or later also the Lina is supposed to be there and the Nyx assassin stays solo which is actually not too bad because he's he's the one with the uh, probably the best survival chance here against that techie slain sort of. But let's see, what is the techies doing at this point anyway? The techies, he's just currently mining up, he doesn't have any point in early suicide squad, so we're just looking for positional control for now from that techies, and Bingo will be looking to farm up on the lane. Yep, and look at the stats, like uh, six professional games, four wins, two losses, but never won a game without a tusk. So they didn't get the tusk through, they went for the tiny combo. I mean, this is a different scene, this is China, so our western understanding is sometimes not a bit far off. Husker, actually, if they telekinesis back into the tower, oh, actually, there we go. oh my god, they're gonna get that first blood with the techies, but at the moment, the Husker is the one in trouble. He's trying to hide, eating through, but nope, they just not gonna get this. However, they're locked. Well, they locked the Lash Rock in here, but I'm not so sure if that's even enough for a kill. He's just eating the way through, so he could escape. The creep's doing the rest here. One more right-click, and the Earthshaker is even gonna die. Or is it the range creep? The range creep is playing pretty much the third player on this dual lane. So yeah, that's a bad, bad start. Double kill top, and the first part, Nyx is running into the mines. I gotta say, I do like the way they played this one for the bottom lane. They put all the mines up. You, I was expecting maybe traditional hand grenade where you throw the the, te the techies into the nicks. Instead, throw the nicks into the techies. Reverse hand grenade, but it works in this case. Yep, you you can actually. That's that's the funny part about the the toss. You can actually target mines, so you just have to be there next to the nicks and you just toss him. The timing has to be right. Positioning has to be right. But other than that, it's like really an old school thing. Since Dota one, um, I don't know how many thousand videos there are, and thanks to Ice Rock, we actually have techies now in Dota two, so we can enjoy this fun. I hope next time I get it on the camera. But for now, I think we're gonna have the lash rack. The Fisher is on the right right side and now it's just about burning spears they're coming out and there's just no way to escape for that last track so they're gonna get at least one revenge kill indeed and that they certainly needed the kill on the board and old chicken if he can get a good start with this huskar i would not count them out by any stretch the huskar in brawl style games is absolutely insane oh look what he's doing like he's actually in that little pocket going for the mines and at the moment well there's a sentry ward he's gonna get that observer ward well that's some gold cool story does he even get the kill the tiny is looking into doing something 
Oh, Nyx Assassin, if he knew where the Techies is. But, well, the Techies actually getting a tower hit. Just a random tower hit. Just like, wow, hi. The Rubik in the meantime is going to get a kill on Alina. I was so focused on the Techies meta there. Yeah. Well, you and Techies sort of have a history, if I recall correctly, don't they, Hepler? No, fuck Techies. No. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't no, it the, the logo for this year so TV much. at one point? <laughs> No, I was looking forward that it comes to Dota 2, but then once it was actually implemented, I immediately regret my decision. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, still, nonetheless, we're looking for some fun this game. Oh, runes will be coming up in about 10 seconds. It seems Tongfu is just going to have complete rune control in this game. Kabu, is he going to be contested? It seems so, by LT. So if we can see something from the Lina here, possibly look for a kill. Instead, it's going to be an easy bounty for her. And, well, now Rubik could be in a lot of trouble. Kabu doesn't get stunned up by the Lina. Telekinesis up onto the uh, Earthshaker, but now he's being chased by pretty much all Everybody, of the sports. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunately I... the wrong direction. The, your base is on the other side with... Actually, no, the Storm Spirit is not going to go here to the Ancient. So, where is he running? He has no TP, so there is no hiding. There is absolutely no hiding. Well, actually, there is hiding, but uh, he's going to lose a lot of time. They they knew he has no TP, so they're going to go the full circle around. Maybe see him on the other side. At the moment, the Rubik is doing the right thing. Like, if they would chase him, try to find him, it would be so much waste of time that it's not even worth the kill on the Rubik. So, he's gonna escape, but the Storm Spirit, oh, the timing was bad. The Storm Spirit saw him, and now what is he doing? He's running to the he's creeps and trying to get the knife, but I think Fan is, is good in last, last hitting. Trust me, he's gonna get it, and there we go. With the overload, easy going. Indeed, indeed, and well, he did waste quite a bit of time of the supports, I suppose that's one nice thing. It did give Yu Yu 9 a nice bit of experience, he's actually level 5. However, Huskar, Huskar's level 4 and catching up quite nicely. He's got two points up in that Berserker Blood and we're just looking for some force out of Old Chicken in the next few minutes. If we get some kills on this Huskar, we're going to be looking for quite the game. Yep, at the moment the biggest downside for the Leshock is that he doesn't have any boots, so that's of course a problem. He buys them now and he needs them badly because if he's not dying by the spears after like any gank or light strike or whatnot, then he has a chance to run away. If he has no boots and the Husker can actually catch up and like refresh stacks of burning spears, something like that, he will definitely die. But I still think like <laughs> The truth, truth be told, if the Husker really gets like three stacks burning spears plus some random damage from like a light strike array or I don't know dragon slide in, then uh, he will just die uh, with damage over time. That's that's just a fact for now. So Leshrac needs to boost his stats ASAP. We have well the Rubik trying to go for that rune, oh denying it. No, Storm got it. There's actually no. Oh, this is a nice time, but you don't want to go further because that was a nice angle for a level 3 shackle shot. He actually goes for a shackle shot build, which is very interesting. We don't see every uh, Windrunner going for that. Then again, we usually see Windrunners in, in the offline and not in the mid. Hmm. Well, power shot build, as you sort of mentioned this in the draft, a power shot build against, say, a Huskar won't really do that much, whereas the extra stun duration would give you longer to wail on him with a focus fire. Yeah, I guess. Um, not so sure what really the game plan is. The Huska, unfortunately, level 5, so he can't really jump on that Leshrac yet, otherwise that would have been like a safe kill. We have the Lina in a very awkward position. They see her, there's the lift up, there's the split earth, and an easy kill with a fate ball. Like, this is... I don't know, this is not the way you should play it on uh, EP side, because they have the try lane, and at the moment they just get so... Oh, ball 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 lane. Here we go, throw Fine, into like, mines, boom! The first time I saw it, the first time I saw it. Otherwise, it was always so fast that the Nyx died. So yeah, free, the, this is the third mines kill on the Nyx Assassin with this toss combination. And well, I think we can safely say this lane worked out. Techies, nerf. Yeah. However, I, I've, I've got to at least play the logic card here. The tiny to set up that kill needed invisibility because Nyx is doing his damnedest to stay away from that tiny at all costs, just for the threat of that combination of being thrown into a techie standing on mines. Yep. Well, there's there's only one upside in what they do at the moment, the way they play it, is the upside is pretty much the techies, 
being in lane, actually laning, being a pusher and, and whatnot. By the way, Nyx Assassin is trying to find someone. The Rubik has no vision. There is no true sight whatsoever. There's the opening slave. Easy kill on the Rubik. I don't think the Leshrac is going to go for any kind of revenge. We need the Huska on level 6, which actually just popped up. So, in theory, he could jump him. And that's the question. Does he jump him? The range at the moment? No, it's not going to work. It's 360 movement speed versus 370. There's no way for him to catch up. So, that's not going to follow up in a kill. But maybe they're going to just capitalize and go on the tier 1 tower, there's still a cliff, it still takes them tons of time to actually go through, the next creep wave is far away, that means in every other lane Tong Fu can pretty much do the same and look in the mid, there's the focus fire and Techies with his amazing right clicks of 40 damage is also helping. <laughs> I suppose it can be labelled helping, but more importantly it was the threat of mines and the threat of death to anyone that came to defend. Still though, how has Fan done ultimately in this middle lane? He's 47-5 up against 49 and 13. So he did lose the right click battle, but he did pick up a kill on that Rubik. Yeah. Question is, what item decision are we going to see from this storm? Are we going to look for that fast orchid? Do you think? That's that's actually a good question. I mean, the orchid is 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 kind of okay if you jump on certain targets before. Of course, they get their spells out. What targets could that be? It could be uh, preventing the wind run. Could be even preventing the suicide squad. Um, I'm not so sure. I, I think Orchid is looking at the Tung Fu heroes not bad overall. But let's see. At the moment, we have a nice sentry ward here. One that would scout out a Nyx Assassin. They also have, by the way, Observer Ward, where AP is all the time under. So they have exactly vision on what's going on here. And now we have to check if there's... No, they're not planning to smoke or anything, but they know they are guarding the Huska. But is there anything coming? The Tiny is showing on lane. By the way, what I wanted to say about the techies, so just to get back on that topic before the fight top breaks out, man, <laughs> never mind. Screw the techie topics because they're standing under a ward. There's full vision here and Tongfu knows exactly what's going on. Yeah, it but Nick's even, Nick's even been deafened under that ward. It was quite a valuable ward in all respects for Tongfu. That ward just saved them a load of gold. Yeah, okay, so I can actually go back to my techies topic. Um, when you have a techies in lane, the good thing is you actually know where he is. So, yes, you get like two or three kills on the next assassin, but to be honest, in, in unpredictable ability, if that's even an English word, um, then, <laughs> then it's actually better, because look what happens to the storm right now. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I... <sighs> That's pretty much all you can sum it up with. Just look at the storm. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> no, that's that's the biggest problem. Now that he left the laning phase, they actually have no idea where the mines are. So he can actually sneak in certain position and go for it in the mid. Oh, we have already focus fire. Go on the Huska. Now maybe there's a turnaround. The Nyx Assassin wants to go for the opening, but doesn't really get it. There is the stun. Light strike array. We have no Laguna played. Is it enough? Well, the Rackets are coming through at the moment. There's no mana burn, no nothing. The Windrunner, well, trying to actually get up. The Huska somehow surviving with the Armlet toggle. There's nothing else. I don't think there's anything coming through. However, Fate Ball is going to get that damage. Also, the Mines doing damage on the Nyx. Well, no Spike Carapaz. No kills. So it's a 2 for 0 trade. A very messy fight. Very close for the Windrunner, actually. But um, I'm surprised the, the Huska actually survived there because they really put a lot of effort in it. Yeah, the Huskar, sure, the Huskar survived. You can say that's nice, but Windrunner on the flip side of the coin survived as well. And then they got a kill on the Nyx. Yep. Still very advantageous for Tongfu, even though the Huskar managed to live in that one. So let's see where Techies actually puts the next mines, because look at this, he reached also now a level, yeah, he's level 6, which means we have now, uh, is, I think this is uh, 3 mines plus... Yeah, that, that is definitely enough uh, for almost anyone who runs into it, like for example Four mines, two remotes, Lina, dead. <laughs> I love and this now, game well, already. they're going to go for the kill on these uh, techies, but nope, suicide. Uh, it, techies is just so painful to deal with Hefla. Yeah, no, I, I don't even want to cast a techies. I don't need to make, like, play to play for a techies. It's like just saying, look at the Lina. And look at the not existing Lena anymore. <laughs> the techies cast itself. He, he, the, the explosion is all you need to see. It's the most satisfying thing. Yeah, I, the, the sad part is that this is actually uh, a game free of a best of three in a, in a winner bracket final. 
So the techies is actually working out and that's, well, I mean, as I said, the people that laugh right now about techies, they have no idea because, as I said, two games, uh, two days of Chinese casting. Oh, never mind, there's a go here on the Windrunner, but she's just running, which is probably the right thing to do. I thought maybe there's a turnaround with the shackle and then a focus fire, but oh, there it's coming out. The aiming is beautiful. Now, is there a follow up? Now, Spadurf is too late. The tiny is smoked, and now they break the smoke. Oh my goodness, they just throw him, not even onto the mines, because that would have been style points. Just a normal way is enough. Yeah, and they try to the shackle on the Husker again. Don't quite get it this time, but it just, this. This is just such a snowball for Tong Fu. Yeah, the scoreboard is inaccurate, guys. Um, that's absolutely correct. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Corrupt Trump Bear. Our statsman is correcting. The Chinese, they did not put the correct score. EP won the first, Tong Fu the second. And uh, if that, by the way, continues like this, I think Tong Fu is on a very good way to win also the third game here. Looking at the graphs right now, we're heading towards the 7.5k mark, and that is, of course, with the techies, and the techies is always a disadvantage, as in, like, open fights and whatnot, but so far, they utilize the techies so well that we have soon a point of EP where they cannot leave their base, do not go out, cannot smoke gang whatsoever, and we saw in the past games, and even in the past two days, that EP, they're utilizing this usually on cooldown. There are, like, phases where they go from... Uh, one, two, three smoke games into the next fight and pushes and whatnot, and, and Techies takes away all this mobility. It, it drains the fun out of your soul. It just drains your soul, pretty much. So, so you're saying Techies is the new anti-mage, anti-fun himself? It's, actually, I have fun with the anti-mage. In comparison, I don't know, Techies versus anti-mage, then that's like, I don't know, sex versus, uh, I don't know, microbiology exam. Well, you would know about that one. Yeah, as a math student, that's, that's like pretty much the worst it gets. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think we're going to see a push here at bottom. The Lashrak at least comes there. We have a value point in the Diabolic Edict, but even if they commit to a fight, then yeah, well, they, they have a, a bad awakening pretty fast because of those mines, so you, you're definitely going to see something happening. Do we have the Plink Dagger already on the Tiny? Yes, we do. So he can actually jump forward, throw whoever there is into the mines. So where's the Plink? Is it actually happening? Uh, v is going to most likely be the victim here. Nope, Fan comes forward. He's going to try to get some damage on UU9. Fisher comes out. We're just waiting for the detonation though. Oh, and down goes the Earthshaker. But it's only the Earthshaker, so yeah. that's that's kind of a good thing. That could have been way, way worse if they waited a tiny bit. Uh, maybe it would have been like two or three kills, but he didn't want to take the risk. Kill is kill. Oh, he tried to throw, but he's throwing the range creep. Finally, we see... That not working, but who cares? He's just suiciding, so he gets that. Now the angle for the shackle is not correct, but it should still be enough. The Windrunner just rushing on the Lina and getting there the third kill. So it's pretty much a one for two trade. And yes, I do not count a techie suicide in because it's not of value to the enemy team. It's for the techies right now. He was anyway out of mana, low in HP. He just returns to the fountain and does his evil work of the devil somewhere else on the map. Indeed, and there's some more math for you guys. That is just a ridiculous amount of damage, and Energy Pacemaker are lucky they backed off when they did. Otherwise, that would have been an ultra kill very easily. Yep. But nonetheless, we have uh, Fan. He's gone, or going for a Bloodstone. He didn't go for the Orchid in this case, which means the Suicide will still most likely reliably be cast. And let's see what other items of note are coming up for the... Uh, for the NG Pacemaker lineup. They've got a Sanj soon for Old Chicken on the Nyx Assassin. He's Nyx. got nothing new, but he's playing very dangerously around landmines. I'm going to look for a, a kill on Cabu. That's going to be a nice vendetta into Impale. Does he have enough damage, though? The right clicks should be enough, but no, a steal up onto the Mana Burn, and now in comes the rotation from that Tusker. But, well, Bingo is there to really retaliate, and that's going to be a nice counter kill. A Huskar for a Rubik, that is yep. very much in favor of Tong Fu. It's a trade you can do pretty much any day. Um, it was kind of desperate like to jump in there on the Rubik, but uh, the sad truth is that Nyx Assassin on a level 8, 17 minutes into the game, is just not enough to kill that Rubik. Uh, how much items does the Rubik actually have? He has three branches to boost stats. That's pretty much it. Like The rest went actually into Talon's no. Oh well, this is this is just not good. It's just not good. Because you, under normal circumstances that deep into the game, the next assassin should have been able to kill him. But of course he had a horrible laning. Where should any, anything come from? That's that's the biggest problem. Also, Lina going down top. That was Shackle into, like, I don't know, whatever else they casted. 
was so fast that it was barely worth to mention. Fade Bolt, among other things, but more importantly, the Rubik managed to steal the Light Strike array. So we're looking for telekinesis into Light Strike and just all of the shenanigans that follow after. However, with a little bit of a lull in the game, Heffler, I know you to be a bit of a betting man. Nah, never. <laughs> so, with TI coming up and the techies being the hero of mention in this game, how many techies games do you reckon we're going to see at TI and what are you willing to bet on it? Including the group stage? Including the group stage. Oh, wait, first we have to include the kill here on the Nyx Assassin. He can't save himself into the Vendetta. The Chekhov is just too long. It's four points into it. The Storm hiding in the trees and I say, uh, six. Okay. So you think six techies games in all it's of It's realistic, TI. yeah. Yeah. Because not just the Chinese actually have the techies in an active meta, not just like the West with the, the stick in the butt that like just do techies for fun. Actually, it's not true. Secret, for example, actually uses Lysis. Uh, techies. I think we had a Cloud9 game with Techies as well that failed horribly, but that's, yeah, e -E Sama playing stuff, so who cares. Um, I, I don't know, it's, let's see. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we see a lot more Naga Siren than we think, and we see a lot more Techies than we would initially think about the TI, but back to this game, because I think we're gonna have a very awkward situation. First of all, they oh, run God. into a mine. There's a mine, well, they see it, they're gonna destroy it, but they're gonna kill the Techies here. There are no mines in the vicinity, and that feels so good, because he's on a wicked streak, he was worth 700 gold, however, now he tried to go for more. The Rubik, well, it's just one right click away. The Nyx Assassin actually gets it with the Mana Burn. And now, well, they start to actually get some nice vision around their base, which is very much needed. They need even more. They need to get rid of wards, mines, whatsoever. The problem is when you're that far behind, uh, investing in a gem is very dangerous. You might as well just lose this gem really fast. And then, yeah, that's that's a lot of net worth gone to the enemy. And, yeah. Actually, Tongfu might even use it, use it against you, simply because you have a Nyx Assassin. So, on the tanky target of Tongfu having a gem against a Nyx Assassin, then say goodbye to your hope of a good initiation. Well, the thing is, the kill on the techies... Sure, you invest that much to kill the techies, you end his spree. While that's going on, you've got Tiny pushing bot, farming up, he's almost got his full agonims, he's only... 180 gold off, less now, and you still got Windrunner farming her heart out. Hell, this is going to be Roshan. Yep, R Roshan with the help of the techies. And that's why I also love the techies build, by the way, because he's not going like the, the pub build techies player, going directly rush into like arcs uh, soaring into a Garnem Scepter and then trying to be like the coolest boy on the planet. No, he's actually going for utility items that will also, if this game somehow tilts or doesn't go. As, as well as you planned, he can help with Roshan, he can help with the fight, he supports uh, the tiny, If he can even take this medallion and then just put it, like, uh, get the solar crest up. It helps him against the Huska if he jumps on him, the same for the Storm Spirit, uh, he can put it on the tiny, make him more tanky, or the Lashrak if he's jumped by the Huska. It's a high value item actually, and if he's the one who gives the utility in the fight, I totally support that, so he's really not useless, useless 40-50 minutes beyond, except for of course defense purposes. Yeah, well, <laughs> Solar Crest, I, I would love to see on attackies. Imagine the damage of landmines, among other things. But I I think in this case, the techies in a utility role can just accomplish so, so much more considering the threat he's putting into the enemies as well, battlefield-wise. Mines everywhere, stasis oh, traps who haven't been uh, leveled, but where are we looking for a jump? Top lane? Oh, Top so lane. Yeah, that's actually a pretty close one because there comes the Telekinesis, there is the follow-up and the Split Earth and the Lashrak actually survives here. He even had 14 stick charges which he could have used, uh, I think he was about to, but when the Rubik finally got the Telekinesis through, he knew that he didn't need to, so nice return there on the Storm Spirit. It would have been nice, of course, when f if, like, if Fan would have gotten that kill. They need it at the moment, they really need it. Tong Fu is just planning on that techies being, yeah, just holding off EP so they can farm and get really fat. For example, on a tiny bit. Oh, there's a go on the Windrunner, but this won't be enough. Well, the Fisher, but now he has, of course, the Windrunner. Now it's all about Shackle. Well, the Carapace doesn't help you with the Shackle. It still goes through, and the Windrunner also surviving. Surviving on very low HP is, is definitely the expertise of Tongfu. Hmm. I, I would completely agree there. And Well, it could have been a different game in a way if this Nyx had got an earlier Blink Dagger. Sure, you can shackle and try to run, but if this Nyx had a Blink Dagger, you're not going to escape. 
And now we do get that rotation coming down. Bingo, in he goes. There's that damage, and the Earthshaker just evaporates just to the avalanche and toss combination. Yep, that Didn't alone at the moment click. is enough. And this is this is a tiny on level 14, so his punch is going to go uh, a bit higher when he then suddenly enters level 16. Also top, like, someone is already working on that Husker. Um, now, I don't know, like, Husker, the evasion is there, the initial, well, damage. Now, actually, the evasion runs out, and it gets actually interesting with Alina coming in. The problem is, uh, Windrunner, you know, they're very persistent. The power shot hits, but she's not pursuing. The biggest problem, of course, would be the low cooldown of life break. It's 12 seconds. Uh, you would really jump on it, but uh, she really wants it. She really wants it. If she goes for a blind power shot right now, Right now? Nope, it's not happening. Uh, it's not the easiest call to make in that situation, though. As, well, Tongfu are just going to start to shunt this tier 2 tower in that mid lane. And with Tiny, with the Agonims, this isn't going to last too long. And more importantly, Rubik just stole Fisher. This is quite the spell for him to abuse here. Yep, and the easy tower. Top, they lose a tier 1 tower. That was uh, denied, so that's all good. But uh, in the mid, they're going to lose a tower, which is very, very easy. Looking at the gold craft, it's, the growth of the gold craft is a tiny bit slower of what um, Tong Fu did in the last game. Now they smoke up, and actually they take this curve around because they know somewhere in the mid there might be mines. Then again, all the Tong Fu heroes, they more or less park around the mines. The tiny, for example, is now in a position where you could toss you directly on that stack here, and that's deadly for it. Any anyone, it's like no one could tank this one up. You have to see. Oh, there's the initiation here. They actually find well, the windrunner problem is ages, and I'm not really sure if they want to go for the second fight. There is a split earth, hits the Husker. There is a shackle, the shackle position would be horrible, but they actually take him out a second time. This is really good. Now, do we have another life break on any target? No, they want to bait them into the mines. EP, if they make this mistake, they might really regret it at the moment. They should be happy with the ages and a kill, but I don't think this is the end because look at it, Storm Spirit, and he wanted to throw him, but no, it was not enough, now he's completely out of mana, he has a regeneration room, but sure, you cannot use this in the fight, nice little echo slam there, doesn't really do much SM damage, but look at the Storm Spirit, it's so close to the mines go, just one step closer, Leshak really wants to bait them, well, the Husker is going in, and at least they get one kill out of those mines, still, the trade is pretty bad, if you count in the ages, it's a 4 for 1, and I think we are at the end of this fight, eventually. Yeah, I think so as well, unless we see a little bit of overzealous aggression coming out of LT, walking the wrong direction, maybe. But still, Nyx Assassin finally has his Blink Dagger, oh, which is more Alina. important. There's a split Earth. Yeah. Lina evaporates to the Pulse Nova. There's Welcome so Welcome to Bloodstone Gaming. Like, he, I think he honestly did not expect the Lashback already being again there, but uh, what he forgot is they still have a tier 1 tower, so it's an easy TP, and the Lashback, of course, I think he had... Uh, 11 charges, 12 charges, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, so easy respawn for him. Indeed, indeed. Still, with the tiny up in three seconds, I'm going to be looking for some more pushing power now. Maybe the tier two on the top lane. Maybe start looking towards possibly a tier three push with, of course, some mines set up somewhere nearby. Yeah, sure. Why not? Roshan, by the way, uh, is still <laughs> two and a half. But look at the mines, like, at the moment, everything is focused on, like, the the eastern side of the map. Like, whenever they try to go in that half of the map, they have to deal with so much. And also, like, these little remote mines are more or less for scouting. Uh, Techies actually starts, finally, a little mine camp also top, just to throw them off. Uh, he might actually find someone running in. Oh, the smoke? The smoke gets revealed, which means they know, but... Welcome to the mines. He might just use a suicide unless they stun him to death, which actually happened. So the Nyx surviving this one, he was not done with this, uh, say it, with this stack. And well, they found the Windrunner there. Still Shackle, he just needs the right angle, but at the moment it's not really working out. Windrunner still trying to run, but there's the mini stun. There should be another Fisher, and that is a kill. Finally, EP make huge step towards sort of, yeah, reconsolidation here. This is looking good because they don't trade as badly as before. Indeed, getting those two kills on top of all of the shenanigans in the last few minutes. This gives them an opportunity to push that top tier two if oh, they want it. Or hunt more kills. Huskar makes the jump towards that left rack, but it's not exactly the easiest kill. That Yules is going to buy more than enough time, but in comes the Tiny, and Tiny's had enough of that Lena. And he seems double be damage. Old Chicken with a DD is going to die quite quickly. If he can get past the evasion, that is, but Tosh certainly ensures that one. And UUU9 is still standing strong as well. It seems Fan is the only one around on full health and mana. 
he can't really do anything against all of this, or can he? He balls in. He's gonna look to try to bring down anyone he can, but no. Suicide by the Techies tries to get some good damage off. There's no escape for this storm. <laughs> Overzealous <laughs> aggression, triple kill for Zex Bingo. There's no way out of this one for NG Pacemaker if they do that again. Yeah, I take everything back I saw there because uh, it, it looked good and everything. Oh, by the way, the Earthshaker. Earthshaker is going to farm directly under a ward. So in before Shackle. There we go. Shackle's landing and even he, him alone, that should be enough. Tiny is going to secure it with a, with a casual avalanche. And that pretty much makes it a, a 1 for 5 trade if you take the other uh, kills out. Either way... Um, I, I didn't understand that fight top here because they jumped the lash rack, but the storm spirit as well as the earth shaker they were in the vicinity but they did not bother to come and then when everything was lost and they already eaten a, a double kill with a of course double damage tiny which was a bad timing for them to even get engaged but yeah then they somehow jump in trying to somehow get a kill it just did not work out and in the end well they had to pay really dearly for it losing five heroes after you just had a, a good spree yeah, that you really do not want that. And the the tiny in this case is just going to start building towards attack speed. The DD rune there, that that just was so so heavy on the value of that timing. There was nothing they could do once that tiny got involved in the fight. Hell, I don't think Techies even needed to suicide there because the Yules actually dodged the um, the explosion damage from the Techies in that storm. Yeah. But still, it seems for good measures. Light. Just, I mean, you're a techies. Like you, you're, you're there to blow things up, even yourself. So that's that's your only purpose. And then you get like, I don't know, three thousand virgins when you go to heaven. That's the whole plan. But either way, there is Windrunner. There has the Fisher stun, but now he's out of stun. He needs the stuns off the Nix assassin. It's still not enough for a kill. I can't even believe it. He runs away with 60 HP and a beautiful shackle into both. The Lashrak is absolutely happy because now it's just about AOE, and he doesn't get anything through on that Windrunner. A triple kill. Actually, it's a double kill plus one, but yeah, three going down for the attempt. Only the attempt on the Windrunner. It's looking worse and worse for EP. At the same time, we have the Tiny also starting to split push, which gets significant because, yes, thanks to Agan of Scepter, look at all the damage. The Storm Spirit is jumping on him, but he just doesn't have enough damage. I just doubt that. The Vortex already came out. The Huska was trying to, but yeah, he just says, sure, I'm just gonna shake this off. Plus the Tiny, four points in Cracky Exterior. He's getting, getting tankier and tankier. Yeah, indeed he is. In the tiny, he's also starting to build up that attack speed as well. I should think we're going to be seeing a Manta, maybe that AC start to come about. And with those two items, well, you really don't want to be fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with the tiny that quickly. We're going to be looking for more big team fight oriented plays, I think, from NG Pacemaker if they want to try to take this game. But still, Tongfu, their, their small-scale skirmishes have just been on point. I, I haven't seen a team this good with their small-scale skirmishes in quite a while in the Chinese scene. Yeah, absolutely. We're 30 minutes in and we reach the point where Tong Fu is also thinking about just going into that base because they have everything that, that it, they really need to. Like the Windrunner with the Arganem Scepter, Tiny with the Arganem Scepter, the, the siege damage is just ridiculous. Focus Fire plus a Tiny hitting with Arganem Scepter, you're gonna lose like buildings in, in seconds uh, unless you have a cliff or s any other means to stop them. You cannot really go far out because you don't know where the techies did his work. At the moment he's still focusing around yeah, more the western side of the map and well that might actually lead to something because he is the winch runner. He's starting on the storm spirit. There is the TP by the lash rack but they actually run directly into a nice fissure. Where's the echo No, it's still on cooldown. Well all the evasion of the winch runner keep him at the moment alive. Storm Spirit trying to do something. No, they're gonna lose and the next assassin there's well the Yule Scepter actually not helping but the split earth is there and they're gonna get a double kill as well. With the Echo Slam that would have been so beautiful, but it just did not happen. In the meantime we had Techies suiciding that was here because I think the Huska jumped on him, yeah. Well the Techies just looking to maintain map control really, keep the mines down in the enemy jungle, stop the rotations in the farm for NG Pacemaker of using that jungle as much as possible. And I think the main one here is this stack of mines. This stack here, it's purely designed to stop the enemy getting Roshan should yep. it spawn. And it's there since, since I don't know, like the, the dawn of time. Like that was one of the first stacks he, he did after he left the laning with the, the tiny. So yeah, they're gonna go into Roshan. For EP, besides them still being dead in the fountain, there's just no way they can stop this. Not to mention that this Roshan is going down. This is even without the medallion debuff. This is just them punching Roshan, focus fire, and there's more than half duration left. He's just going down. The damage is unreal at the moment. 
So yeah, with this Aegis, I think Tong Fu finally got all the courage together to just go and get high ground. Then again, EP, they came back on two incredible games any time the, the enemy tried to break their high ground. So maybe that's what they need, it's some sort of incentive. Late game, I never like to count out Pacemaker. They they can really defend their late game, even if they're coming from behind. And they do have a pretty decent team for it. I mean, you consider they can keep the waves out with the Dragon Slave, they've got the Light Strike Array, and more importantly, they've got the Earthshaker, the Echo Slam to defend their base. But it seems here we go. The skirmish is there, and old chicken gets caught out. He just gets beaten down. Wicked yep. sick for you, 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 nine, and now the chase. Can they get LT? No, they're going to focus on Lee instead. They try to throw him out of the base, but don't quite manage it. But still, in the base in the meantime is that Les Shrak and the Tiny, and they'll just chew apart whoever they see fit. They get the Nyx Assassin, and now Shackle looking for damage on Lee. He does manage to survive for now, but the racks are going to start falling here, and there's very, very little that Engine Pacemaker can do to really hold this if these racks fall. Another toss combo onto Old Chicken, and in the back lines, you've got Storm trying to bring down LPC, but you've got Zing Q going to tap on him. Echo drops onto Zex Bingo as well as UU9, but UU9 was Yules and now, well, even with the Laguna, it takes so long to bring down this Lesh Rack. It's a four for one, effectively, and, well, down go your racks. Bingo this is, is more. just going This is now. more than one racks. This is GG, yeah. because uh, this was a buyback on the Huska, no buyback available on the Storm Spirit. They could easily go into a second Rex, and I would even doubt uh, that the defense of a third Rex, or, well, the tier 2 was still standing, so that would have been, of course, kind of hard against the new buildings, but uh, in my opinion, they, they could have just gotten gone for a tier 4 tower with the 60 or 70 seconds on a Huska, which was effectively the only jeopardy uh, in, in the entire like equation. Like, it, it worked out. Welcome, techies, in the meta. You just won a game. Um, our Satsman said it. It was six techies game, four one. Uh, I think no, four of them were one. With it was with Tuska. Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was Tuska, and they'd never won without the Tuska. But now, well, techies in the pro scene, Southeast Asian Dota, well, Chinese Dota. Sorry, with a uh, with a tiny combination, the hand yeah. grenade combo instead. Okay guys, that being said, so this was our winner bracket final, which means Tong Fu, well deserved for, well, this, this game and all the other games. They are now in the grand final, waiting there. The grand final is gonna be uh, the normal format, best of five, with one advantage for Tong Fu. So they pretty much just t need two games uh, to win this. Uh, the next game is gonna be now the loser bracket, which means uh, EP is gonna get kicked down. And I have no idea how that game... The game on Hefla TV2 is still playing, so we actually have to wait for the result there. But I just see on Hefla TV2 there's a GG call as well, but I'm not sure if that's already the third game or not. So we have to actually wait and confirm that. But till then, guys, I'll play some music and we have to recuperate from that very explosive game. <laughs> uh. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> I had to. <laughs> okay, guys, be right back. Some music and, and ads and stuff and whatnot. Hefla the Pun King. <laughs> 